Now let's see how we can calculate mean by the third method or the next method called the step deviation method. Now before we start with this example problem, now we need to know the essentiality of using this method. Why do we need to use this method or when do we need to use this method? Now coming to step deviation method, this method is used to calculate mean only when we have each of the deviations with multiples of the common factor. Now as I can see for the previous problem which we have discussed, we calculated the deviation using the mean deviation or the assumed mean method for di as minus 30, minus 15, 0, 15, 30 and 45. So we have calculated this clearly from the previous problem. So taking with the same problem of the previous session, let's see how we have the common factors. Now each of minus 30 can be written as negative 2 times 15, negative 1 times 15. This is 0 times 15, 1 times 15, 2 times 15, and 3 times 15. As I see that each of the deviation values are multiples of the common factor 15, therefore in such cases we can use step deviation method. So let's see how step deviation method can be used for these kind of problems which give the deviation with the common factor. If we do not get the common factor, it's not suggestible to use step deviation method for the problems which do not have the common factor for their column with di's, that is deviations. So because we have the common factor 15 in each of the cases of di's here, I very much apply step deviation method for this example problem. To start with, my step deviation denoted by ui is given by the formula xi minus a by h, where a is assumed mean and h is class size. And a is assumed mean and then my xi is each of the observation or mid value of class interval is how we obtain the formula for step deviation. So step deviation ui is given by xi minus a by h. So let's see how I can calculate ui which is xi minus a by h using the formula. Now as in the previous case we have seen that the assumed mean is the middle of the entire values of xi in the column. I take either this or this to be the assumed mean but here I assume this to be the mean. Therefore, my assumed mean is 47.5, which on subtraction of A gets me deviation this. That is, this is clearly di by h. So, my assumed mean restricts di, which in turn gives me the formula for this as di by h, where di is the deviation and ui is the step deviation. So, finding the step deviation from deviation is what we do in step deviation method. So let's see how the step deviation for each of the class intervals can be calculated respectively for their frequencies and class sizes. Now as I clearly see here, the class size 10 to 25 has 15 students in each group. Therefore, my class size H is 15. In this case, my class size H is 15 and my assumed mean A is 47.5 through which I calculate the UIs for each of the rows or each of the class intervals. To start with the first row, here I can calculate UI as DI by minus, so DI which is minus 30 by H which is 15 gives me minus 2 as UI. Similarly, my DI which is minus 15 by class size which is 15 gives me negative 1 as my U2 for the respective class interval to second class interval. Similarly, 0 by 15 gives me this 0 and 15 by 15 gives me 1 and 30 by 15 gives me 2 and 45 by 15 gives me 3. Therefore, each of the UIs are minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So using this, next immediately I try to calculate Fi and ui and see how 
my fi into ui reduces to so i multiply this times this and see what exactly i get two times of minus two is minus four and three times of minus one is minus three and seven times of zero is zero and six times of one is six six times of two is 12 and 6 times of 3 is 18 is what I get in terms of fi and ui when multiplying fi with ui is what I get now next using this I would like to calculate the sum of fi and ui that is when I calculate sigma fi into ui I add each of the values and then I get summation fi ui ranging from first class interval to the sixth class interval so let's add this minus 4 minus 3 minus 7 plus 0 minus 7 plus 6 minus 1 plus 2 11 11 plus 18 29 so my sigma fi ui is 29 and of course my sigma fi is always fixed in each example problem because the same problem is considered in each of the methods so therefore my sigma fi is already calculated to be 30 through which i calculate the step deviation mean using the step deviation method so let's see what is the mean formula using the step deviation method so let's see how we can compare u bar and x bar so before that we have u bar as sigma fi ui by sigma fi that is calculating mean using the step deviation method i have my formula for u bar which is sigma fi ui by sigma fi where my ui is xi minus a by h h is the class size a is the assumed mean and xi is the mid value of the class interval for the respective i so let's see how i can derive x bar from this formula of u bar so coming to this that implies when i substitute in place of ui i substitute this value i get fi times xi minus a by h by sigma fi because ui is xi minus a by h i replace ui with xi minus a by h but this on expansion gives me sigma fi xi minus a 1 by h of sigma fi because h is independent of i i can bring this 1 by h outside and then write all remaining terms inside now next what i do is i split this where this is u bar is 1 by h times of sigma fi xi minus sigma a fi by sigma fi is what i get when i split the factors from the bracket so fi xi minus a times again a is independent of i can come out of the summation so therefore this reduces to u bar equals 1 by h times of sigma fi xi minus a times of sigma fi by sigma fi is what i get when i take a outside the summation independent of i now when i split each of the terms i get this to be sigma fi xi by sigma fi minus a times sigma fi by sigma fi on splitting the denominator into two different terms this clearly gives me the cancellation such that i get this to be 1 by h of sigma fi xi by sigma fi is x bar as we all know clearly minus a times is what we get for u bar therefore if i wanted to extract x bar i take only x bar on the left and further simplifying using the cross multiplication i get h times of u bar is x bar minus a that implies x bar is a plus h times of u bar or x bar is a plus h times of u bar which is sigma fi ui by sigma fi is what we get the relation between x bar and u bar with a is assumed mean h is class size fi is the frequency of each of the class ui is the step deviation of each of the class is how we substitute and calculate 
So let's see for the previous example problem, what would be the mean using the step deviation method. So coming back to the previous example problem, I clearly have my assumed mean as 47.5 and my deviation which I obtained as 14, 29 over 30 is what I got here. So using these values, let me see how my x bar which is 47.5 plus 15 times of u bar that is 29 over 30 gives me 15 ones, 15 twos. So 47.5 plus 14.5 is approximately, is exactly 62. That is the mean of the given data using the step deviation method is 62. It is as same as the mean obtained from assumed mean method. Therefore, the method which you're using does not affect the value of the mean which you obtain. So you take whether the step deviation method or the assumed mean method or the direct method, we get the mean to be fixed as the same value. In this case of step deviation method being 62 as an example problem.